I feel it. 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 Oh, it's back. Is it really? The whole crackle, snap, crackle, pop? Yeah, you sound like my Rice Krispies bowl. I don't hear it so strong right now. Okay. It's been oh, like... It sounds okay to me. We were like... All right. We were like practicing and like my fucking mic, the Yeti, because I'm using the Yeti mic and it's like crackling and shit and I don't really know why. Like, I don't even... Yeah, I don't... Because it's like easy, way easier to transport, obviously, than all the other shit, so... But for whatever reason, when we were talking, and I was even using the uh, the monitor to like to hear myself, and it sounded like just kind of crackly, like almost like there's dust or something in it. But I mean, I don't I don't fucking know. It's whatever though. That one might just Maybe. be the gain on that one. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I I turned it up and rate, turned it down to see, but I think we're as probably as good as it's gonna get for the most part. Um. But yeah, guys. I mean, it's it's been a while, man. How how y'all how y'all been? How y'all feeling? I mean, I know we technically did record another episode, but we had like some technical difficulties with that. But I mean, I feel like you know it's been, it's nice it's nice to hear you guys' voices, man. You know, was, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's something we actually never do is actually talk. We're always in the group message, but you know, the fact that it didn't make it to recording, like we had technical issues. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we're just supposed to talk about that. And let it go. <laughs> yeah. God was looking out for us on that one. He was like, "Nah, nah. If I let this one go, somebody gonna get in trouble." <laughs> Absolutely. We we dropped a few oh. bombs. We might have to bring them back subtly. <laughs> All right. Well, what's going on, Piglets? It's your boy Taylor B, and I'm joined by my rhythm and client co-host Daniel, DJ, and Joey. I say rhythm and client because, or DJ. First of all, DJ's not even here. And second of all, I say oh. rhythm and client because. Because Daniel and Joey, you know, they're, they're all about that music life. Whatever, right? The co-host. And keep it. Yeah, exactly. The co-host of um, Podcast Past. Ooh. <laughs> DJ's still here. He's just, he'll be joining us again in the future. He's just taking a little hiatus and then he'll be back. So little. Um, but what, I forgot he was alive <laughs> half the time he'd been recording these damn things. Oh, wow. Wow. But welcome to another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. And before we go any further, be sure to click that follow or subscribe button. And remember, Culture by the Uncultured is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your brother, your sister. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Culture by the Uncultured. It's going to be one word. All right, guys. This whole pandemic is... You know, maybe coming to an end. I want to. I want to jump right into the whole pandemic issue. The vaccine. That's our first. That's that's our first destination, gentlemen. Are y'all are y'all here for that or not? Nah? We, we taking it. We we we. <laughs> are we the guinea pigs or not? Nah? Are we? What's what are we doing, man? What's the plan of action? What's going on? This I'm is. A, uh, go ahead, Daniel. Go ahead. I'm gonna take a step back and just watch everybody else. I'm a, I'm taking notes. <laughs> I got my notepad with me. I got my recorder with me. I'm just going to sit back and watch all the crazies go crazy. I'm going to watch all the zombies turn into zombies right in front of me. And I'm just going to make sure I double tap. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I was you, I was right to let Daniel go first. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> I knew it was going to get some crazy shit. But I agree. <laughs> like, bro, me, myself, I'm already a person that doesn't, like, go to the hospital like that. I don't really trust doctors. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, the most I've ever gone to is like go to the dentist, you know, because tooth pain will fucking ruin you. You know what I'm saying? Like from the top yeah. down, it really will kill you. That and your neck, you know what I'm saying? But the doctor, as long as I feel good, you know, I get the right amount of water in me. You know, even when I have headaches, like I don't take medicine. You know what I mean? I just kind of do what I can to get through it. And it actually works out in my favor to the point where, you know, the only time I actually take like pain medicine or anything, it's if it's severe and I know I got to do something about it. So you, you're not going to get a flu shot out of me, let alone something that just came around. You're trying to tell me, yeah, take this <laughs> with celebrities and people volunteering to, to video record them taking it before all of us, as if we're all going to get the same one. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're all graded on this shit, Daniel. <laughs> tap, tap, tap in, bro. <laughs> like, you know, down well, you know, down well, it's not the same vaccine for everybody. Which code are you getting? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. There's a there's a different virus. I mean, there's a different virus for the different um, different stages of the people in here. There's going to be the different vaccine for the different stages of people. Middle class, middle class gets something else. Low class gets something else. Black gets something else. Latinos get something else. Whites, you know, 
depending on where you live, you could be getting the same thing as the blacks and the Latinos. FYI, be on the lookout. <laughs> Bro, I can't take no chances. My credit score just went up. If they treat me like they like I like my credit score was three years ago, I'm in for it, bro. <laughs> like I'm done for. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as myself, I, I really don't know. Uh, like I, I except for like maybe when I was a kid or whatever, I don't really recall any time I've actually ever got a vaccine. But I, I've never been like, oh, let me go get a flu shot. Oh, let me go do this. Like, I've gotten them before, like military or whatever. You got to get them shits, you know, when you go, like, go across seas or whatever. So when I went to Guantanamo Bay, I, I had to get I, – I don't even remember everything I got. But I got a couple shots or whatever. Or I, I got, like, a, a nose thing. I didn't even get an actual shot. So, I mean, there's definitely various ways they can, like, you know, give you or introduce a vaccine or whatever. But I don't know. This just seems – it does seem kind of sketch. There's a – you know, the government's always lying to us. There's always kind of some some kind of – nefarious plot behind the scenes and like you know and imagine in 10 years you're going to be like if you are a loved one was took the vaccine back in 2020 you know like i'm like i can only i already imagine that commercial now you know like just because of some kind of repercussions that we that people will get from taking the right. vaccine today or tomorrow or whatever and on top of that on top of that it's like they're going to make something like a vaccine damn near mandatory mandatory to even like exist within society you know what I'm saying? Because I can't, like, we're we're big-time music lovers, all of us. You know what I'm saying? And I can't wait to get back in the action of a concert. But for people to say, hey, you can't come to my concert unless you have the vaccine. I was like, well, now you're pressuring me to do this thing that I'm terrified of doing. Because up until now, and since as far as back as I can remember, the government been lying to us. And then recently confessing that they've been lying to us. So, so it's yes, like, sir. what what do you yes, want me sir. to believe, bro? I know two. I know two I mean, celebrities that even... have taken vaccines in the past. Okay, Michael Jackson and Sammy Sosa. Look what happened. Say to that. Them, okay. Say that. <laughs> look what happened to them. Okay. I got a light skin friend. Look like Sammy Sosa. I got a dark skin friend. Look like Sammy Sosa. Okay. <laughs> the the oh only thing I will God. say about Sammy is. Sammy was actually the that case that people, the woke people on social media talk about how he hates himself. Yeah, that's true. Like, he really is happier as a white person, so I can't really take away his smile. <laughs> I, he literally asked for that. <laughs> he literally asked for that. <laughs> Real quick, too, I mean, aside from what we talked about uh, in another episode about Ticketmaster, uh, allegedly, requiring that you get a vaccine or, or tested or something like that before you can attend a concert. Um, I know like Lupe Fiasco, he came out and stated that you have to have a vaccine to attend his concerts. Some people were like, I'm not trying to hear kick push. So I don't really give a damn about going to your that concert. Was me. I commented, I, like, I like, I like <laughs> Lupe, but I, you know, I comment for the masses. So I was like, ain't nobody, I'm, I was like, bro, I'm not trying to hear kick push 20 times, bro. I'm straight. <laughs> But I mean, like, that's like, it's gonna, if it gets like to the point where celebrities are pressuring people and stuff like that, it, it could be kind of like, it could be a little bit different as far as like the mass is like the majority of the people getting it or something. But it, it's like the same thing. It's like, I, I'm hearing other people like kind of advocate for the vaccine. I don't really care or, or go, go for or against. I mean, do whatever your prerogative is, go ahead and do it, man. But I feel like it's like, so part of the argument it definitely is like vaccines ex have existed they and they do supposedly work you're introduced to a little bit of it and then you're kind of like i guess i don't know how it really works specifically but like you're somewhat immune or like you can't really contract it for a time be being or whatever but as far as i know like if if this is something that is like this new is is it even possible to have really created something that works that no nah, the only thing it's been working on is rats and probably pigs somewhere because they got the closest, the closest of skin to human skin is pig skin, and they're always using mice and all mice and rats to, you know, check the genomes and all that stuff and how things react in, in the body and all that. So those are the only two things that have been tested. Um, I don't believe anybody that's talking about oh they gave me you know the the practice test out here because a lot of people got the placebo test. Yeah, we saw what's happening to them people out there. Okay, come out, they came out. They went in, they went in looking like you, you, you looking like your favorite cousin, and they came out looking like sloth from the Goonies. I'm, I kid you not. They, they got destroyed off that thing. I'm not trusting anything right now. Peep game. How long did the flu exist before they had a vaccine for that shit? The coronavirus been around for 14 months and already 
bitch slapped the entire world talking about how the fuck we got a vaccine in keep, less than two keep years. In, keep in mind, too. Keep in mind, too. You got to get a flu shot every flu season. And yet I don't so get that like, one, and I'm fine. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird and complex thing, and it's like, some people say statistically maybe it's more of a killer. Some people say statistically it's the same as the flu. It's all like it. It, it kind of goes know. back to that thing of there's too much inf- there's too much information out there, and I don't know who to believe and trust because you guys are you guys are allegedly both hitting me with the facts, and yeah, like you, we don't know. I don't. I don't. The fucking internet know. lies to us every day, I'm bro. Not, like no, it's like, whatever you choose to believe yeah. that day. Like oh, bro, I thought you said this and that. Yeah, That's bro, but fact. that was on Tuesday, bro. It's you know what I'm saying? It is Saturday now, Pippa. You live it in the past. That's how fast <laughs> we move now, bro. We don't know nothing about this virus, and they're still trying to you know, pitch this idea of having a vaccine of let's get our society back and blah, 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 this and that. But it's like, bro, I I don't know what the fuck this is going to do to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody knows that shit. For real. Exactly. This is like brand new, brand new. It's not like something that's been around for a while. Let's say, and now they're just like, let's say a few, yeah, like a few artists are gonna demand that we take the virus to go to their concerts, but obviously all the country artists are gonna say, nah, yippee kaye, slide down and party. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't care. So it's different groups of people that's gonna be able to like be open to stuff. You know what I mean? What about bar? What about bars? Like you're gonna have to go to a place and be like, uh, ID, uh, medical record. (laughs) <laughs> you hear that like Atlanta you hear that like Atlanta's numbers are like super low even though like they're open like, oh bro you should not have said that because you know one black person here that's gonna be like it's that melanin boy you can't beat it down <laughs> in Georgia boy <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you got superpowers early I just oh I, my god yeah oh man speaking of superpowers let's jump into this and get off this COVID thing y'all heard about December 21st all I've heard is we're supposed to be getting superpowers I thought black people had superpowers since we was born wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> so so there was like a discussion of some sort going on on twitter and then somebody brought up like this paragraph or whatever saying that you know basically insinuating that black people around the world are going to get superpowers december 21st which i guess happens to be the winter solstice and it happens to be uh i forget what it was but it's like something about jupiter and saturn and like 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 being aligned or something like that just like a couple things kind of like corresponding on the same day there's no way to say that this is true or but and I and I highly, highly, highly doubt that it's gonna happen. I pray to God. Well, I got wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> so when the twenty first drops, I'm gonna need all of my black brothers and sisters to go dunk a basketball. And if, <laughs> if <laughs> or or spike a volley, you know what I'm saying? Like do something incredible. Try something crazy oh. and see if you survive oh. it. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> like that time, Bow Wow picked up Jordan's old sneakers. You know what I'm saying? Like you just never know. Oh. I, I like bro the, the memes that have been produced from black people getting powers on the 21st is have been hilarious bro like i i've seen like, you ever seen the picture of the the black kid that's like floating through the hallway yes. and there's like a white kid running from him so like i've seen that and they like gave the kid red eyes and then like they gave him like one of those like, <laughs> bats and i was like man come on man y'all be y'all be killing me with this shit bro for real like the december 21st black folks out there that are listening Keep keep a lookout on your. You might feel a little feel a little tingle. In the in in recent memory, like in recent years, I, there's been so much online about the history or like ruling or reign of white people and then black people. The rest of us, though, like what the fuck are we? <laughs> like we don't like we don't play no part in this, bro. <laughs> like we got no like nothing's working for us right now. You know what I'm saying? Like Mexicans, bro, we're literally just like the side chick. We let you guys we let you guys argue and whoever's being cool at that time, you know, we kinda on your side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jeez. Black people getting powers. What are we left with? Nothing. <laughs> Um, speaking of powers, there was a slew of freaking Marvel related content that is, was announced on the uh, Disney investor day, as well as star Wars announcements. Um, uh, it's a, it's a crap ton of stuff. So bear with us folks. All right. We're going to, we're going to try to take a little quick, little deep dive into this, not a deep dive, like let's say a shallow dive, you know, let's, let's just skim the water on it real quick and see where it takes us. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start off with, with the star Wars stuff. Cause there's, there's less of the star Wars stuff than there is in the Marvel stuff that I'm even 
which I'm not even interested in because honestly, The Mandalorian doesn't catch my attention for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I haven't watched it, so I'm not excited for anything really. So, um, where are we getting? Where are we getting? Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Uh, obviously, that's like a pretty famous game. And uh, I think they just released another one too on PlayStation 5. Uh, I don't know if it's called Star Wars Rogue Squadron or if it's just called Star Wars Squadron. It's like a spaceship piloting game or whatever, like Ace Combat, but for Star Wars or whatever, right? And also, we're getting an Ahsoka Tano spinoff series from The Mandalorian. Woo! Um, we're also getting a Lando called Rissian series. Uh, it's it's yet to be announced if Donald Glover or uh, Billy D. Williams is going to like reprise their role as Lando Calrissian. <laughs> um, oh, and real quick, uh, I just learned about this the other day, and this is just kind of something random. But uh, uh, you guys know are familiar with yes. Mandela effects, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. So I brought this up in the group chat already, but I just kind of want to make sure because I didn't really quite understand what you meant when you said what you said earlier, Daniel, right? So the Mandela effect is apparently every most people in the world believe that C-3PO had was gold plated for like the first three original movies or whatever, right? He had he was he's full, you know, full cast gold cast body or whatever. And that's like, you know, costumes and like games and all that stuff kind of showcase him the same way. He's usually gold or whatever, right? But apparently, we supposedly remember that wrong, and he had a silver leg. I don't recall him ever having a silver leg, except for when he was silver in the prequels. There was, I know in the first movie, he didn't have any kind of like casing. In the second movie, he was silver. And I think in the third movie, he was gold already. But I don't remember him ever having a silver leg. I'm trying to think back of the time I went to Disneyland, and it was, uh, I believe it's Space Mountain. And when you're waiting in line, you actually walk by a C- uh, C-3PO and, and an R2-D2. And I'm for certain he was solid gold. Mm-hmm. Yes, but Daniel appears to yeah. Appears there was to a certain, remember I forget a silver what leg. He was I think they like snuck it in or had something. I remember I looked. I was like, why is his leg silver? Um, I I, I do remember asking myself that. I want to say something happened to where it got cut off somehow, and then they were just like, oh, here's a. It was the only leg we could find, and it was a silver leg, and they put it on it. Um, I forget what movie it was. It was it, it was so quick when I when that when it happened. It wasn't like a major, you know, talking point in the, in the in the plot or anything like that. But it was super something super quick, and it was something that I noticed, but I forgot about it like immediately. So I definitely remember seeing a silver leg at some point, but I also remember had seeing the all gold version of CP three for most of those movies, definitely, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's what I remember too. I thought that was super weird. There, I, we kind of went on like a little. Uh, well, I went on a little Mandela effect, like kind of like re- research, and just saw a ton of things after being introduced to the the Spy Kids one. Uh, there's like a scene where they're like swimming with sharks, and then something about like Junie peeing. There's like a joke about like, oh man, the water got really warm or whatever, and then he says like he peed. I remember them swimming in a cave, but I don't remember there being a bunch of sleeping sharks around them, because um, sharks, I don't think. Fish can't sleep like that, like right? Won't they like die or something? No, they they sleep. Fish sleep. I've just, I've never seen a shark I, sleep, I, I, I but I, I def, fish definitely sleep. Hold on, let me check our planet real quick. Let me get back to you. Okay. Bro, you got me, you got me doing this quick last minute but, but Google yeah, search was... about c 3 leg, bro. What the hell is this? <laughs> It was, it was a trip, man. Like, there was, like, 40, like, the most popular, 40 most popular, like, Mandela effects. And some of them, there was, like, three or four maybe that I was, like, okay, no, I don't remember that. Like, I remember the way it, it says it is. Like, one of the famous ones, too, yeah, Hypnotic. Yeah. You guys remember the hit, Drink Hypnotic? You know that there's no why in Hypnotic, right? Huh? <laughs> is it just H-P-N-O-T-I-Q? It's H... It's yeah. HIP. No, nah, no, nah, it had a Y, fam. I, I, on, on everything, there was a Y in the word hypnotic. There was for sure a, a Y in the. It name, had that. Sure. It had that little logo, on right? I, I, that little squirrel. Yeah, bro. Like that's like there was for sure a Y, and they said supposedly there's there's never been a Y. It's always been HIP. I think it's I'm just like y'all are lying to us. The, the simulation that is one in the Bernstein Bears. Fun. I remember that too. There's. Yeah, it's like it's like I'm just gonna say how it's like kind of like spelled or whatever. So like I, I know it's Bernstein, but it's it looks like it's uh, people. Most people look like uh, or spell it like Baron St- uh, Stein, like S T E I N, but it's spelled like Baron Stein, uh, Baron and then uh, uh, S T A I N, 
And it's just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, how is that even? I don't remember this word at all being in the, in this part of the na- the title of, the, of that freaking book. Like, what? It's, it's it's Mandela effects are super trippy, and every time I think about them, I get this like tingly feeling, like somebody's Ooh, watching right. me or monitoring me or something. And I mean. So are are these just based around different things that are easily um, overlooked, like subtleties? No, no, no. It well, what the what the well, it's to a degree, but some of them are like much bigger. Like so, like the reason why they're called Mandela effects, because it, it, the first one that people noticed was that apparently when Nelson Mandela died, people thought that he had died like ten years prior to that in prison. Or whenever he was in prison, like like years would go in prison, people were like, "What the hell? He just died!" Like I could have sworn he died in prison. That and it's like it's like a, it's mass groups of people. It's not like one or two yeah. people, or whatever. Like your mom or, or something thought that, or your cousin or whatever. It's like a bunch of people who remember like this Shazam or this event or whatever the heck it is are like, yeah, j- that's not real either. <laughs> Look, you know that, right? <laughs> I'm not getting. I'm not getting into this. <laughs> Have you seen? You think you saw a movie with Sinbad when oh he was a God. genie? I I did see a movie with Sinbad when he was a genie. <laughs> you sure as hell didn't, because that doesn't exist. Kazam is the movie that where where Shaq is a genie. No, 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 no. It wasn't called, called Shazam, Shazam. It was with called Sinbad as a genie. And he was a genie too, and I was like, Nah, fam. There ain't, there ain't, I, I, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you just watch that. Okay, so the movie Kazam. I literally <laughs> the movie, just watched this movie with Sinbad. <laughs> The movie, the movie Kazam is with Shaquille O'Neal. I remember I, that one. I'm I remember that. You, bro, no, but for some yes. reason, yes, I yes. do remember yes. a movie called Shazam with Sinbad, bro. Like for some reason, I remember that shit. I can't help it. <laughs> but it, I'm telling you, on everything, it doesn't exist. Sinbad himself has confirmed this. Like there is no movie where I played a genie. It's like it does not exist at all whatsoever it's crazy i mean i i looked up a, uh, there's there's a lot of them bro like it, it's and that's why i say it's crazy because it's like how could so many people at the same time think the exact same thing that, that's imp- it like it's i i suppose it's not impossible but it's <laughs> highly improbable you know like why would i like it, it, like just certain things don't make any sense like okay like but here's another one for you right here right how do you guys spell looney tune spell it for me real quick L O O N E Y T O O N S Looney Tunes. Okay, uh, that's wrong. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. It's Tunes is T O O N, right? That's how you. That's how most people remember it being spelled, but it's spelled T U N E S. That's bullshit. Yes, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> Oh man! Here, uh, let me see if I can find another one. How do you spell for breeze? It, okay, it, does whoa, the breeze? Whoa, 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 whoa! Time out, time out! I'm not. You're not. You're not doing this. <laughs> because, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on! No, 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 you listen, motherfucker! <laughs> you're not gonna change my childhood. Listen, I I specifically <laughs> remember something saying Looney Tunes spelled O O N. There's gotta be um, what's that movie? There's a movie where the where the logo pops up. And it says Looney Tunes. I is it Rock the Rap movies. You know what I'm saying? Like it's something from like post two thousand, I wanna say. Early two thousand. I don't know. I'm gonna find it <laughs> and I'm gonna cut somebody out. <laughs> this book, this book. <laughs> okay, how do you does Febreze does okay between the R and the Z, how many E's are there in Febreze? Two. Is there one or two? <laughs> I two. I wanna There's... say it's one. It's it is one. It is one. There's nah, not two. Fam. No way. I thought it was two as well. <laughs> Spell Oscar Meyer. O S C A R M A Y E R. Yeah. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's okay. a song I, to I it, bro. It the other way. I, I remember it the other way, though. M E Y E R. M A Y E R. Yeah. My baloney uh, has a first name. It's O S C A R. My baloney. Has... Okay, yeah, yeah. M A Y E R. Yeah. Final answer. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you guys remember there ever being a cornucopia in front of the Fruit of the Loom logo? Yeah. Oh. At one time, I do remember seeing in it. In front of the Fruit of the Loom logo. 
or in, or in the back technically because you know like the fruit falls out of it or out of a cornucopia yeah i think the old school one had the cornucopia and then they, they took it out i'm pretty no it never existed what oh did they change the color <laughs> of some... no Daniel, somebody, <laughs> hey, Daniel, somebody, <laughs> you're not that today, Shane. somebody play. <laughs> I'm telling right. you, bro, I'm How do you, there, okay, too. how do you, I, I'm going to pronounce it the way I know how to pronounce it. What do you, how do you spell Cheez-Its? I want to say it's C-H-E-E-Z-I-T-S. So there is no Z or T in Cheez-Its. It's just Cheez-It. C-H-E-E-S-E-I-T? So C H E E Z I T. There's no it's like there's no Z or T or Z or S after the T. It's a cheese. Just cheese. Yeah, it's it. a cheese it box. It's telling you to cheese it, but when you eat them, it's cheese it's. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> Did you know that in double stuff Oreos, there's only one F? That's not even proper English. What? <laughs> you know what it was i know what it is now the reason why there's brands where we remember ones that had other things is because they were knockoffs and we didn't even know it the fruit How to the loom i care i know i saw a fruit to the loom with a freaking cornucopia stupid wooden that's, that's the same thing i said i think that it was brands. also like a knockoff yeah like, yeah like off brand or something um how do you spell flintstones Oh my God! Like Flint, Michigan, and then Stones. F L I N S T O N E. Flintstones. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah, I believe there's it. there's two T's in Flintstones. Yeah, so it's Flint Stones. Yes. Oh, I've, yes, I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> um. Oh, you know the line from from. Uh, what the fuck is it? Forrest Gump? Life is like a box of chocolate. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates. Uh-huh. It's not a real. That's not. He didn't say that. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's that's. Uh, there's another one like that too from a uh, from Star Trek. Star Wars. From Star Trek, where it says "Beam me up, Scotty." That was actually never said. Uh, he he. What he actually said was, "Life was like a box of chocolates." And there's like same thing for Star Wars too. It's not Luke. I am your father. It's just I am your father. No, 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 no. That's wrong too. I've heard him say, "No, Luke, I am your father." What no, is going his, on th- they in say, this world? They say, <laughs> they say that the line that people remember is, "Luke, I am your father." But the line was all he really said was, "I." Oh am no, no, I get it. He said, "He said, all right, you got to slow it down into like pimp terms." He said, "Look, play, <laughs> I am not your. <laughs> I am your father." He said, "Look, I am your father." He didn't say, "Luke." He said, look, you guys remember, you guys remember the line, hello, Clarice? Hello, Clarice. Yeah. Clarice, it's good to see you again. He never, he never said that. He never said that. He just says Clarice, huh? Clarice. All he really said, all he really, the reality of all he said was good morning. Wow. No, no. (laughs) No. It's crazy, bro. Like these, these are. Hold on, nuts, you got bro. me. These are, you got me on YouTube stupid. and shit now. Hold up. <laughs> I don't believe it, bro. We okay, okay. I'm pretty sure we all grew up in the same schools and stuff. So like, we we all know that there's only 50 states, right? Yes. So wait, wait, you gotta wait. Okay, all right. So you're telling me there's 49? No, okay. No, no, no. It's 50 <laughs> so, states, but some people, some people say that they remember being taught that there was 51 or 52. No, they they were told that eventually the size of the states might turn into one or two, like California into two, or or Alaska was gonna be gone, or you know stuff like that. It was always 50, but they were gonna. Oh, they were saying like, oh, but Puerto Rico and this that you know American soil. You remember the story of Tank Man in Tiananmen Square? Uh, where he stood in front of the tank and they, they supposedly ran him over? Okay, so so some people say... So there's two different stories about that that people recollect. Some say that the unidentified man, no, unidentified man known as Tank Man was run over and killed, but other videos show him moving away from the scene. I've never actually seen... 
videos show him moving away from the scene. There's a video on the on the website I'm looking at right now. Come out, come out, come out. Breaking news. There is a hello Clarice. Hold on. Hold on. You found it? Hello, Clarice. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice. Did you hear it? Okay. The entire oh, list God. is now void. You hear me? <laughs> Limited tools are with two O's. <laughs> found it it's not what i think the one for that one is it's not the, the same scene that they're assuming we're talking about People yeah think it is Probably. so next uh, next one I, I knew i had to debunk one of these that's bogus that that one that one actually i can't, I can't wait to find that like, sinbad one i know i saw sinbad i was like this is a yeah, knockoff because yeah. i'm telling you bro that one that one i've heard that one i heard though for years and i've never been able to find it or anything what you ever think maybe it was one of those things where something in that movie or film was was shown that people realized years later, like, oh, shit, we can't let people see this. You know what I'm saying? And then just killed it and told him, you know, hit him with that neuralizer from Men in Black. Zoom, he forgot it and shit like that. And all of a sudden it just don't exist. They pulled it like they pretty much did to that movie what Mia Khalifa wish he could do to her career. <laughs> wow, that's funny. That's hilarious. Like it's out. Leave my girl alone, man. She ain't yeah, bro. Like just you, right? stuff from yeah. existence because they control the internet. You know what I'm saying? I, I, it's possible. It definitely is. Po- like it's like. But, wait, 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 but there's no way a ghetto ass low budget movie like that doesn't have a VHS copy though. So it's like you know what I'm saying. Like there would be evidence all over the place. <laughs> So, so there's one Pikachu's tail. Do you guys remember there being a black tip or was it blank? It was, it was blank. I believe it was blank. I saw a bunch of little Asian kids at my elementary school put a black tip though. That's I remember seeing a black tip too, but it says that there was it yeah, was it was a blank. blank. Tip. I remember that. There's a little there's a little brown part at the at the bottom of his tail, but at the tip there's. No I remember when they me. remade when they remade Pokemon, Pikachu had a black. I remember that. I remember I looked at that Pikachu. I was like, oh, that black tip looks different. I don't know if I don't know if it was like a, a reboot or something like that. But I, I do I do remember that. I remember. That brand new I remember it specifically because uh, I used to actually be really good at drawing when I was young, and one of my friends wanted me to draw her a Pikachu for her binder. So I remember um, it being blank. That's one I'm never gonna. Yeah, that one. That's one where if you find one with a black, it, it's it's low budget. It's a knockoff. Probably. It's 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 crazy though how like. These things are are uh, supposedly remembered by a lot of people, or you know, or misinterpreted mm-hmm. by many people, or whatever. Like the Tank Man thing, or whatever. It's it's just super insane. I I I really didn't remember the Tank Man thing, but then I watched that video and I was like, this nigga really just walked out of the way of that tank. I I remember I, I don't remember him getting run over and killed, but for some reason I feel like they stopped. That's what I remember happening. For some reason I feel like they stopped, but I, it, it's a trip. It's a trip, man. But. We definitely veer super <laughs> off course. Let's try to go back to where we were going. We're in the, the movie news and announcements or whatever. Um, the Marvel announcements is fucking there's down there too many to announce. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try Anytime we talk about Sammy Sosa skin, we are definitely off topic, bro. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> wait, wait, all wait, right. there's, a, there's so, one more. I'm still looking for this Mona Lisa picture that has like the alien ship in the background. Oh, I haven't heard. I haven't seen that one. But there's a there's a Mona Lisa with the um, like they say her smile was way more defined, uh, in the in like the the picture that people remember. But it's like you can barely see her smiling now. Like it, it's just like a, you know, like it's like her mouth is just closed pretty much. It doesn't look like she's actually. No, smiling. I remember it always being kind of ugly. The, the real picture. She like I know she's supposedly <laughs> keeping all that, but either the painter really sucked, or if he was really good, she was ugly, bro. I'm not buying that shit. Somebody got probably a man. Yeah, exactly. Somebody little boy. Right. Wow. 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 Y'all. Wow, wow. <laughs> all right. All right. Back to the back to the Marvel announcements. All right. Um, we got an Iron Heart series which was announced, which is essentially uh she's basically a black woman who uh, has the most uh, highly advanced suit of armor next to Tony Stark, obviously, but Tony Stark is no longer in the MCU, so this is gonna kind of be like the new the new high tech ways or whatever. 
Uh, we got the first trailer for the Loki series dropped. It actually looked pretty cool. I'm um, kind of looking forward to it. I think Heimdall might actually be in the series too because like the lasers and all that stuff, like the take you like transport you across the, the, the galaxy or the universe, or whatever they appeared and Heimdall is the one that was able to do that. So I'm actually kind of interested in seeing what actually happens. A Fantastic Four movie was announced. No cast or anything like that was announced or anything like that. Um, Oh, totally forgot to add this to the Star Wars stuff. Hayden Christensen, he's returning as Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan series, for any of you guys that are excited about that. Um, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk and Tim Ross Abomination are both going to make appearances in the She-Hulk series. So we haven't seen Tim Roth's uh, Abomination since, what I think, the last Incredible Hulk movie was in 2008, if I'm not mistaken, or 2009, I can't really remember. Um, it was years ago, obviously, we didn't see either of those two characters come back, the Abomination or the leader, who was the guy that helped. He tried to help Edward Norton's uh, Bruce Banner uh, get rid of his Hulk powers, and instead he ended up getting infected, too. And, like, you see his head growing or whatever, and eventually becoming the leader. Um, anyway, moving on from there, we also got another trailer for the Falcon and Winter Soldier. It looks freaking phenomenal. I can't wait for it to come out. We got another new trailer for Wanda, WandaVision. Uh, that's going to be, I think, the, I believe that's the first thing that's going to come out for Phase 4, uh, for Marvel Phase 4. Uh, it comes out next year. Everything's pretty much dropping next year. Um, we still don't have a release date, unfortunately, for uh, Black uh, Black Widow, I don't believe. So uh, only time will tell when that will actually come out. Huh? Uh, we got a new trailer for the Marvel What If series. It has various elements. The What If series is basically going to be a series where Marvel uh, takes various characters and kind of like, oh, what if this happened instead? So... For example, one of them is going to be instead of Steve Rogers getting the Super Soldier Serum, uh, Peggy Carter is going to get the Super Soldier Serum. Um, instead of a Star Lord going into space with with uh, Yondu and all that, they're going to send T'Challa into outer space to become Star Lord instead. Um, things like that. Uh, it, it, and there's going to be a bunch of other things too. There's like a zombie one I saw, or like a zombie Captain America. Um, there's uh, one uh, some Star Nick Fury, and all the characters are supposed to be like voicing their actual characters that they play or whatever but they're just kind of like one-offs or whatever uh, the whole series is supposed to be a bunch of one-offs like what if this happened to whatever character so that's kind of be kind of cool and i i believe that is it you know thank goodness i actually <laughs> made it through all that crap or whatever um I, I mean i don't think you guys aren't really like super huge marvel buffs right so i mean that's why i'm like just trying to get through that crap real quick just so everybody else is no, I'm, a, I'm a casual but viewer I'm, of I'm, all things marvel I'll care. I'll care when the movie's out, and then when I'm done watching the movie, all right, back to regular life. <laughs> yeah, like I'm. I'm super excited for the Falcon and Winter Soldier series, just because. I mean, I'm. I'm excited for Sam Wilson to get the Captain America shield, to kind of get a new costume, to kind of fill in that that role as a leader. I mean, he's and plus he's a black man too, so it's super amazing. You know, super dope. Um, uh, it, it all looks. It just all looks really amazing, and and I can't wait to kind of just you know, inhale the content, if you will, you know, pretty much. Um, aside from that, though, also, because uh, they, I don't know how this is owned by Disney, but it is, um, Alien, like, as in, like, Alien versus Predator, a uh, series was announced for them on the FX network, too, so it's probably also going to be out on Hulu, because I think that's where that a FX series? drops most of their content uh, for streaming services. A series for Alien, yeah. So that, that'll be probably pretty interesting, pretty gory, if you will, you know. Pretty excited to see that. Um, and last but not least, and maybe we can discuss this a little bit. I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch it or not, but Cobra Kai season three, baby trailer just dropped. It was freaking amazing. Uh, quick, couple quick little highlights. It looks like Johnny and Daniel are going to team up. It uh, looks like Miguel is paralyzed. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Oh my gosh. That's super spoiler alert. Um, I, I probably really should have said that before <laughs> I read, started reading this. Um, but uh, there's, there's a, there's a ton of, there's like a ton of info in the trailer. You see chosen, who was the bad guy from uh, the Karate Kid 2 uh, that, you know, he fought Daniel. They're going to fight again. I'm super excited to see that. It looks like they're going to be training in weaponry now because it's uh, the Daniel and his daughter are training with both staffs or whatever. Uh, Robbie is like on the run or something. They catch him and they like, send him to jail or whatever, you know, like, you know, of course, after what he did to Miguel, I'll take his eyes to jail, you know, um, he gets jumped in jail. It looks like, uh, you know, Daniel's daughter's kind of questioning is if Miyagi-Do is the good guys or not because it kind of looks like, all the kids from Miyagi Do are kind of picking on the Cobra Kai kids now. It looks like a little bit of reverse. And Martin Cove's character, um, I, I totally always forget his name the, in the show, but he talks about like, oh, like your enemies think that you guys are the the bad guys or whatever, right? Like you guys are evil or whatever. 
talking about the Cobra Kai kid. So it's like, I, I wonder how where this is going to go. And another another surprise twist, um, Hawks, like, so you remember in the first season of Cobra Kai, there was like that Asian kid that, uh, mm-hmm. that Miguel ended up beating yeah. up, him and his friends. That guy's coming back and he's joining Cobra Kai, it looks like. So I'm 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 excited to see where this show's gonna go. I'm excited for the team ups. I can't wait for the next freaking the next All Valley tournament. I just I, I like the show, even though I I always say this because I don't want people to get their hopes up. It's not some crazy great cinematic piece of like artistry or something. It is fun for what it is, and you need to like have fun while you're watching it. It's that kind of show, and it it works. It works very well. A lot of people like it. A lot of people want to see it more and more and more. And you know, if the, the story continues on the pace it's going, I'm I'm happy with it. You know, I don't know. Like, a lot of a lot of team a lot of team hopping. I'm hearing right now. Looks sounding like the like the NBA off season. Huh? A lot of people switching sides. Ha! NBA off season. You say? Do tell. <laughs> no, it's not, it's nothing with that. I'm just saying, like this Cobra Kai show is really good at um creating your enemies. And then turning them into your friends and turning your friends into your enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen, we've literally seen that multiple times already in the first two seasons. So will that get tiring or, you know, are they, are they just going to beat each other up for it? Well, my, my theory is I think that because the show is called Cobra Kai, I feel like it's going to end up being like a, like a Neo or new Cobra Kai versus old Cobra Kai. So like I feel like that's the road we're going to. I I, I don't know why I feel like Miyagi Do is kind of gonna go away, and then like the like Johnny's new Cobra Kai is gonna take over, and that's gonna be like the the running theme of like because because it, it it would make sense in this aspect because Daniel's wife does not want him doing karate anymore. She doesn't want him training the kids. She wants him. She wants her and because her daughter got hurt too, so it makes sense. So it's taking over their life, yeah. you know. What I'm so if you could kind of give the blessing to Johnny and like kind of like maybe monitor the situation a bit, maybe check in from time to time or whatever, but give him the reins and like you know kind of help instill some whatever values into him into the kids or whatever, right? Then you kind of you're succeeding in both avenues. It's not taking over your life. You can you know worry about your family and your your wife or whatever, and then you know that somebody is watching out for the, these kids. You know you didn't just abandon these kids. They have a sensei. They have somebody to work out for them. So like I see this just instead of being Miyagi Do becoming Cobra Kai again, but then it's just going to be a different one, and then it's going to like you know uh, uh, come to a come to a boiling point, old Cobra Kai versus new Cobra Kai. So and then we're going to get all the way to the end. They're going to be like, there, there's only ever one Cobra Kai. There was never two Cobra Kais. What are you guys talking about? It's going to be this whole damn Mandela effect. Watch. Wow. It's gonna happen. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. But, all right. All right. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm actually excited to see it. I've, I've been seeing, I've been looking at that damn thing on Netflix. Oh, uh, the new season coming January. I've been thinking, every time I scroll through it, I see it. So I'm getting more and more and excited to see that. Um, I definitely do like how the how the story came to a close like that, and you know, it left me on the edge of my seat. Like I, I was so mad when I found out it was over. Like that was the last episode because I wasn't like paying oh, attention yeah. to where I was, and I was like, yo, yo, <laughs> skip, skip, yo, what, what the. F- <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I can't wait to see what direction they take it. So I'll be on my edge of my seat once once again. For sure, for sure, man. Um, and last but not least, uh, I'm just gonna take this out of the the main docket because we kind of discuss it right here. Uh, but Spider Man Three, guys, I'm super worried about that movie, and and the reason is because I think there's way too much going on. Um, there's a, a plethora of actors coming into it. We still don't know who the, like the main villain of the movie is. I don't know how all these characters are going to fit in, and I don't know how it's going to actually fit into the Well, it's supposed to tie into the Multiverse of Madness thing or whatever. Doctor Strange is going to be in it. We got Jimmy Fox reprising his role as Electro. We got Alfred Molina reprising his role as uh, Doc Ock legitimately from the original Spider-Man 2 series. We got Tobey Maguire coming back here. We got Kirsten Dunst coming back as Mary Jane. We got freaking Andrew Garfield coming back as Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. We got um, Emma Stone supposedly coming back as uh, uh, Gwen Stacy from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I, I don't know if they're setting up for Sinister Six. I don't know if Morbius is going to be a part of it. I don't know if, you know, these this Electro, this Doc Ock, and we got Vulture already and Scorpion. I don't know who the next villain to join is going to be. Um, 
you know, like I, I, it's just so much going on that I'm just like, how are you guys going to fit all of this into one movie? I mean, like, yeah, it's a clusterfuck. It's yeah, like it's, origin it's, characters, bro. It's 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 a right. lot going on, and I'm super worried about it. I mean, fingers crossed, it's going to be good. There's even a rumor that Charlie Cox's Daredevil is going to come in. And, and I mean, like that was a rumor before, and it's it's a rumor again now. And I, I I've got no ideas. I don't have the answers, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like when will we find out? You know, but. I recommend just chill, bro. Just wait for that one to drop him. You know what I'm saying? It can't be as bad as we're assuming with all of this going on. I mean, obviously, there's going to be roles that take a backseat to other roles, so it's going to be subtle, you know, but... So they're, what they're going to have to do is make that movie extra long. Like, you remember that movie, The Irishman? No, it came out last year. It was like three and a half hours long. Like, that's, oh, my God. Didn't that win an award? Yeah, it won an award, but... But people have but people haven't been able to sit down and watch a movie for so long. They'll sit there and watch a four hour movie if they have to, just so they can fit all that damn storyline in that movie. <laughs> no, and that's true. That's why it should it should just be a two part. You know what I'm saying? It should be like, look, we're gonna drop one part here and uh three months we'll drop the second part. And especially with like, you know, how pandemic has played into the movie theaters, we could probably be in store to, to see stuff like that happen now. I mean, instead of it being one movie, it'll be like two, three parts because we know like it's a great like if we consider it a great movie, but it's five hours of content. So we're going to drop it in three parts. You know, who knows? I mean, speaking of how the pandemic has affected movie theaters, I mean, bringing up the whole Warner Brothers uh, sending its pretty much entire 2021 slate straight to HBO Max as which is going to be the any all the dates that they have for release dates that are supposed to be for movie theaters. It's going to be at the same time for HBO Max. That says that, that that that's kind of like not nerve wracking because I mean obviously I'm not in the movie industry or anything like that, but it's kind of like it makes me nervous for the movie industry because I'm like thing I don't want movie theaters to kind of mm-hmm. become, become an old thing a, a thing of tomorrow. I mean, it, it's there's something fun to do. I mean, we talked about it before. There's a giant imposing screen. You know, it totally takes up your thoughts. You know, like even if you're stressed, you're tired, whatever it is, you can't think of anything else besides what this movie's going. You know, what's going on with this movie or whatever. You know. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a shame to see that. And I know a lot of directors were not contacted about this for their uh, for their uh, the, the work that they put in, you know, like they weren't mm-hmm. they weren't contacted and, and, and you know, discussed with this about, about whatever. It was just, you know, they woke up the next day. Bam. All your stuff's going to HBO Max. Just so, you know, what the fuck? You know, like that's kind of got to suck, too, because it's like you want your money at the end of the day. And it's like like I, I did this with the intention of making this money. And if you're just going to kind of jip me by like. You're going to take away my theater sales because so you're, you're just going to put my movie out and then you're just going to go straight to the streaming service. It's probably going to be a lot harder to recoup the money that you wanted to make in that in that avenue of approach, you know, like, but at the same time, like for the cut consumer, myself, yourself, you know, Daniel, we might be more interested in that because it's like, well, this is making HBO Max a lot more promising. I already want to watch it. They got freaking Infinity Train. They got Lovecraft Country. They got freaking... Uh, the like the sequel to the regular show, which is like more adult. Like, uh, like there's cartoons and shows and movies on there already that I want to watch. But it's like you're telling me I'm going to watch King Kong versus Godzilla, uh, uh, Wonder Woman, whatever the fuck, a Suicide Squad, and uh, uh, anything else that the fuck's going to come out. You know, like that's that's a hell of a deal, and it, and it makes you kind of want to buy into it more. But then it kind of goes back to the whole thing. It's like, well, damn, like are we going to get all these streaming services? Like, I pretty much have like the main the main batches of streaming services besides hbo max you know and it's like same thing same thing like going on with netflix they're getting rid of the office and it's going to peacock they're gonna have friends in the office that's gonna get picked up for sure you know how many white people love friends (laughs) i've seen that damn sweater (laughs) and that shirt so many times this year it's it's a lot of people that like friends it's a lot of people it's not just white but i agree the numbers are increased in that region of of tent (laughs) But, but, but like the main point, you know, is just like you're, you're, everything's getting split apart. It's basically becoming, Mm -hmm. you're paying for cable at the same rate pretty much. And it's just like, I don't see how, what incentive like actors or actresses or directors or, you know, any of those crews will have to keep creating content if they're not going to get their bank for their dollar. Like, unless like, I mean, which is weird to say, because it's like, at the same time, I think people are always saying like, man, how come entertainers get so much money? They're overpaid. They shouldn't be paid this much. And it's like, could this maybe potentially be the time where we finally see, oh, this is where it kind of goes downhill. This is where we start to see actors and actresses and, you know, all these famous people get paid a little bit less because we can't just go out to these movie theaters to support their movies. We can't just go to a stadium to go watch a football player or basketball player 
you know, dunk a basketball or throw a touchdown. You know what I mean? Like, is will it be because we have to stay inside is the reason why that we're going to start seeing entertainers take a pay cut or not? Then again, you know, you got guys like Paul George who get $190 million for the next however many years, and he didn't really do nothing in the playoffs. But, I mean, I mean, that's that's I don't know nothing about that though. That's not it's not for me to decide. Ouch! What the fuck? Where that where that come from? Jesus! <laughs> okay, I got some for that ass. <laughs> Wait till we talk about anime. I'm gonna shit on some of some more there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just play. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I can definitely see how you, we definitely be able to differentiate which actors are just doing it for the money, which ones are just doing it for the love. If that happens, um. Well, that's one thing that I think will happen. And then two, I think in, if they do take huge pay cuts, they're just going to oversaturate the streaming services and all that. They're going to be coming out with Netflix originals, starring, like starring music. them, music starring them. Um, you know, they're going to have all these different TV shows. You're going to start seeing the same actors over and over and over again, different platforms um, and different streaming services, I think, just to, so they can, you know, recoup some of their money they're going to be losing from this deal. But for me, being a consumer, I love it because I do not want to go spend twenty dollars on popcorn just to watch this movie that I already spent ten dollars on. I want to pay the ten dollars and watch it. <laughs> it's like I got the theater at home anyway, so you know, I have no no qualms about them taking away from the movie theaters and just having it here. Or I, we're just we're you. just thinking too far ahead, you know. Like we, especially how our first topic about the vaccine, if that becomes something that is widely used and you know, we, uh, the general population deems it, you know, quote unquote safe. And eventually me and Daniel come around and taking oh. it and, you know, what I'm saying? like, <laughs> it's okay, Sebby, chill. All I'm saying is, you know, <laughs> like it's eventually there's going to be a time where, you know, um, the economy opens up, you know what I mean? Just like people just walking around with no curfews and no type of rules in every state. And when that happens, places like movie theaters and stuff will be back opening and you know i don't believe i don't believe the takeover just yet i don't believe that movie theaters are just going to close completely because if there is a vaccine that means regular life goes back you know what i'm saying hold that thought real quick hold that thought real quick you just made me think of something with with you saying that so with regular life going back to normal do you think there's room for like growth in and when i say growth i mean do you think there's room for other competitors like you know like main movie theater cha- uh, chains like amc regal or stuff like that do you think maybe we get uh, the we see the 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 beginning of another chain of for some things like maybe like restaurants or whatever like we see the start of something else because like they were able to grow or somehow cultivate enough earnings to open up whatever uh you know during the pandemic so now we there's more competition maybe the market's a little bit more saturated because there's more you know oh I, I was able to do this while y'all was doing the pandemic I was taking a bunch of L's, closing out a bunch of AMC's and Regal's. Mm-hmm. Well, now now we're opening up, you know? I mean, like, E-Pimper? I don't know. I <laughs> mean, like, what? E-Pimper? Like, E-Pimper? I called it, by the way. I called <laughs> it. Oh Jeez. Um, I have no idea, man. I just think, like, it's hard for us to really project any foreseeable ideas because with the, with the new information of this vaccine possibly starting up, who knows what kind of pressure or it's going to add or release from the pandemic you know what i'm saying we we don't really know because it the assumption is oh we're going to have vaccine we're going to be able to open up blah blah then you have the skeptics you have the holistics you have all these people who just generally don't want to take it because they either don't want to they don't they feel like they don't have to or they fear it because we don't like y'all telling us that we should have to take this to be okay especially when you've been fighting this whole time you know what I'm saying? So it's like, what do you really do? We we don't know yet. We have to we have to give it a few months for this vaccine to, you know, kind of take place and inhibit the earth. I believe in the chaos theory. Speaking of chaos theory. Yeah. Speaking of chaos theory, how about this chaos of Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul? Oh, come on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, time out. I'm, I'm feel like I feel like I'm having a Mandela effect. Is it Logan Paul? I could have sworn his name was Jake Paul. Who's Jake Paul? They're brothers. There's two of them. There's Logan Paul and Jake Paul. They're brothers. Jake Paul is who fought. Jake Paul is who knocked out Nate Robinson. Logan Paul 
fought KSI and lost and then got a chance to fight one of the oh, best fighters in the world. Daniel, I am with you, bro. I had no idea these were two different people. I was like, damn, this dude's just calling out his shots, huh? Okay. <laughs> that's that's completely crazy. Yeah, okay, so, so, so since it's two different people, Brandon, um, wh- which one's got better hands? Which one's got better you know it's hard to say, but but Jake Paul, I'm I'm pretty sure he's he's a little bit smaller than Logan Paul. Logan Paul's the older brother, if I'm not mistaken, as well, and he's like kind of just naturally bigger than him. Um, I, I think personally, like, and 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 I, it hurts to say this because you know I got to support my brothers, you know, but I think that Logan Paul was working KSI in that fight. Um, KSI won it by the, the the first fight they had; it was a draw. The second fight they had was a, was a tie or was a KSI won by decision, but Logan Paul like watching it, he looked a lot better. It, it kind of like I'm not a, a boxing like buff or anything like that, but it kind of goes back to like oh he looked cleaner, he like led a lot of shots or whatever. That's what I'm seeing, but I don't necessarily know like what counts, what doesn't count. You know, obviously judges and stuff like that know more about boxing than I do. They obviously have a, also have a closer ring than I do. I'm seeing it from different camera angles. They're seeing it from they're like right there next to it. You know, so. They're seeing stuff that I'm probably not seeing. And there's three judges too, not just one or something like that either. So So one one has a more chiseled jaw, and that's Logan Paul. Yes. But I think I think like if the two of them were to fight, I think Logan Paul would win. I don't I think like even in fighting, he just looks better than Jake Paul does. And Jake Paul just knocked out Nate Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. Okay, so okay. All right. Well, has Logan Paul fought anybody since KSI and he's just going to jump in there for yeah, him? That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to throw his name out there, talk a lot of shit, and then make a, a huge publicity stunt, you know? So that's all it is. That's pretty much what happened. He made fun of him and tried to, like, spell, like, the, you know, I know you can't spell so well, you know, going dating back to the old 50 Cent meme where he was talking about the, uh, mm. what was that, the fucking the ice bucket challenge? And he was, like, trying to tell uh, Floyd Mayweather to read a uh, one page of a Harry Potter book or whatever, like, so it's you know, but it worked. Whatever, whatever it was, it worked, and I'm sure they're going to both get crazy, stupid amounts of money uh, for this fight. And then, but it would be cool to see Floyd Mayweather actually, you know, do some damage to this guy. I'm almost certain that Logan Paul is going to have to cut a massive amount of weight. Um, there's also easily a potential for him to not be able to do it in time because if he weighs what he weighed when he when I last checked it. He's a good like 30, 40 pounds over Floyd. And to get that in by by February, that's that's pretty difficult. I got the tail of the tape here. Logan Paul's um looking defeated except for some of the f- physical features. We got Floyd Mayweather at 43. Paul uh Logan Paul is 25. Mayweather is uh 50 fights, 50 wins, zero losses. Logan Paul is 0-1, guys. Okay. Yes. He had one fight, he lost one. <laughs> okay, no draws. Um Mayweather's got 27 KOs, not a lick for Logan Paul. Um, Mayweather's five foot eight. Paul is six foot two. Okay. And I guess that is the advantage, so called. A huge height difference. Yeah. That would, that's also obviously going to play into like the reach and stuff like that as well. I don't know what this weight looks like a weird. Well, digit, he's going to so be punching him in the knees either way. What is it like? What is it like? Also, they, they, or something? They, they, they went into their they went into their bag for this one. They uh counted up the Instagram followers. Logan Paul has eighteen point two million, while Floyd Mayweather has twenty three point seven. So Mayweather's looking fairly out. Uh, <laughs> looks like he's about to knock this fool out in many categories. But you know who knows? We'll see. I, I mean, I, honestly, I, it, if I if I may take a sport approach to this real quick, I know Logan Paul's taller. I know he's heavier. Um, I don't know if he could take a better punch to the face, but I do know this. Mayweather's hands are notoriously soft. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he has to outbox people. He lets people get tired into rounds. He hits you a little, hits you there. And later, later into the, to the match, you know, in the later rounds, then he starts hitting you in the same spot because he's manipulating your moves with his footwork, which is dominant. So he might approach this the same way he approached uh, McGregor. It's going to be a lot of dodging and a lot of landed hits. That's all it's going to be. You got to be careful with these guys who don't know actually how to box because it's hard to get a read on their swing sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's like fighting somebody who don't really fight, but they're wild. It's kind yeah. of crazy. So as as great as Mayweather and his footwork is, 
he got to watch out with these big white dudes who just go throw haymakers. You know what I'm saying? Because the one, the wrong one, might be the one. And I would hate for Mayweather to hit the ground and look up and it be this fucking YouTuber who's 0 and one. Oh my god! <laughs> you think about that, bro? Like, really think about that. Imagine if the worst came to worst and Mayweather got, and not saying knocked out, but not even knocked down. Yeah, you know how bad that would be for black people? That would set us back at least two uh, years. see, and I'm not I even mean, trying to go there because something <laughs> tells me Mayweather don't really history, care. Man? And Black so, History Month? <laughs> something tells me Mayweather cares as much about that cause as Little Wayne does. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> well, but see, his own, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I, I agree, though. Not really. I mean, not really, but yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, why would, May, why would Mayweather, is it is it really the money, bro? Is this worth it? You worked your whole life hard for this. Even Mike Tyson came back at 15, had a more worthy opponent. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. It has to be the money or he's just straight up bored. <laughs> just one of the two. Right. right. What the hell are you doing? But you, was duck, but, you was ducking, but you was ducking Pacquiao out for them eight years till he got old. Yeah, okay. I really want to. That is the most fraudulent 50 and no. And I know I sound like a hater, but damn, bro. Come on, G. <laughs> YouTubers, come on, bro. I know. Sheesh. It's wild, bro. It is. It is wild, and I'm. I'm sure the boxing community probably feels the same way about it. You know, like it, it's embarrassing, sure, isn't it? I'm sure there's plenty of present day boxers that would love the chance to fight him, but he wouldn't fight none of them more, more than likely. You know, he's he's gonna take the guy who doesn't have a lot of experience. I mean, that's the same thing that happened with. There was like some like supposed championship like, boxer in like Japan. He was like what he's like 19, 18 years old, and he freaking mopped the floor with the kid. You know, yeah. Like, Exactly. It's like he he's he's picking his fights very wisely as in order to like maintain like his prestige and like you know all him undefeated or whatever. But it doesn't look good. Like it's it's like at at what point do you, does it just start tarnishing your 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 exactly. legacy? You know exactly. But let's be honest. When you're talking about money, these people don't care. They don't True. care because because ultimately, if you're gonna do whatever you want for that paycheck. You have to have that tough skin and know that no matter what anybody say, I still got paid, though. It's true. You know, so that's, and that's definitely the tip they on. I mean, his it's the money team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, who knows? But I agree, dude. Like, the if you lower your, your level of competition, your rating goes down. For sure. You know? A um, uh, couple other things before we head out of here. Uh, one of the biggest things I wanted to add into this was uh, – skateboarding or breakdancing or being added to the Olympics. That's actually pretty cool. Um, I'm sure it's a matter of t- just only a matter of time before we start seeing esports and, you know, maybe football and other I sports. Still, that, like, you know, we've come I still want to see something that's more important than all of those. And it's what? something that I've been really, really getting into the last year or two. Um, professional tag. <laughs> World, that's, world, that's a, world chase that's is amazing, bro. It's parkour. Yes. It's speed. Yes, sir. It's agility. It's tactic. Um, it's flexibility. It's everything, bro. And you, you just imagine that is one sport where you don't even have to like really train for like that. If you just have the instincts, you know what I'm saying? If we have a game of tag and make all these people for, I mean, granted, they'd have to have their masks on this year, but you know, if you have all these people <laughs> chasing each other from different countries, like that is like the most childish game that becomes the most intense with skill set. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think, I think tag should definitely be in the Olympics. I absolutely think, that, I don't know if you've ever seen ultimate tag or any like the yeah. other like world, tag world shows. Chase tag. Like I watch them, bro. There's, there's, there's a bunch like they're, they're really amazing. There's a, I think there's one called like blacklist know, from France. Like, there's a few bro with the U S the actually yeah. the U S one, uh, the, um, the 2021 a few months ago, which was surprising because they had a kid on their team who just got cut from, from the French team that had been dominating the last few years. He got cut from the French team. He came to America and won with the new team himself. So it's a it's a pretty yeah, bro. It's a pretty tight knit group. But if you can get into it on on YouTube, I guarantee you, you'll agree with me that it belongs in the Olympics. The Olympics should be a lot of things that's not just sport. It should be like stuff that exists everywhere just because. Like like nobody has to explain the rules of tag, but I guarantee you it exists in Africa, it exists in China, it exists in Australia. You know what I'm saying? Like these are things that just it's like yeah. natural. Yeah, for sure. I, I would agree with that too. That's that's that is a, definitely a sport that I would want to see implemented into the Olympics. Uh, esports have kind of been like 
I feel like they're wiggling their way in uh, for a while now. Uh, you know, football, every year we hear about, oh, it's almost there. It's about to be there, you know. So, I mean, mm. I'm sure we're going to get more and more as time goes on. Break dancing, I mean, I know we got this in the bag, you know. like I'm only, that's, I'm only, yeah, I'm only that's, I mean, that's cool and all, but break dancing started <laughs> in, like, Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, come on, only, only team, only team, only team I'm worried about is, is, is Japanese team. Yep, straight up. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> team I'm worried about. Everybody else, we got this all lot. We got yeah, this. Hey, also, <laughs> don't sleep on a place like the Ukraine or Germany because, you know, Wade's crew in them, they very technical Ooh. and shit like that. I'm just saying, like, it, it, hip-hop. Skateboarding, too. Hip-hop like, might not be one of the bit, you know, like, dancing side of hip-hop, like the break dancing. It might not be one of the largest, like, crowd getters in the world. But wherever it runs, it runs deep. And those folks run with dedication. So that's going to be interesting. Facts. It's gonna be like freaking step up uh, Olympic edition. I want to hear the mix, bro. I want to. I want to hear the mixes because it's not just that you're break dancing. Who's making the music? You know what I'm saying? Like who's because that's gonna play. That's gonna that's gonna play big into this, bro. Because if I'm bopping my head already, just waiting for you to dance to it, that's that's huge. It's gonna be a bunch of biz marquee beats just going on in the background. You have him <laughs> nah, Missy Elliott beats. Missy Elliott beats, bro. That'll be set it off. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that. <laughs> That's I, I'm really excited to see that though. That's gonna be fire. That's definitely gonna be fire. Skateboard is gonna be dope too. I'm sure we got that on lock too. I mean we We've had freaking all kinds of different series based off of all like these freaking professional skaters that grew up in America, you know, random kids. I mean, Nigel Houston, you know, but we, we represent, you know, brothers is everywhere. Brothers is everywhere. So, you know, we, we, America, we got it. Don't worry. We got you. We'll put you on the back and carry y'all like we we, we always do. We mm-hmm. got it. It's all right. It's all right. Um, uh, there's not really much else. I don't think. Uh, oh, Japan. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, oh, you said you, we weren't going to talk about anything else. I'm not, I thought he was getting to the next topic. Oh, I was, I was, I said there's not much. Oh, okay, well, I was just while we're it. while we're on sports, um, Sammy Sosa isn't the only connection to baseball that's losing color. The Cleveland Indians decided to remove the Indians from their name because of the whole thing that happened with um the Washington Redskins, how they think that the nickname Redskins is offensive. Well, when that happened, we actually talked about it on this podcast. We were saying, well, what about the Cleveland Indians? What about the Kansas City Chiefs? What about the San Diego State Aztecs? Like, what about all these teams? And now the Indians have folded, and I don't really know what name they're going to go under, but I hope they make it Cleveland Natives. I feel like that's close enough to where it's not disrespectful. I don't know if any Natives want to speak up, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned, bro. This is one of the oldest baseball franchises. The, the name is 105 years old. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe I'm being insensitive, but uh, it's interesting. Weird. It's interesting because, like, like when you when we bring up all these other team names that have uh, you know uh, ties to, to Native Americans, uh, like like Aztecs or Chiefs and things like that. I, I feel like it's not as bad because, like, well, maybe Chiefs that might be a little bit that it might be a bit much, but like Aztecs because it's like that's like a specific group, you know, Florida um, State Seminoles. Like the Seminoles. Yeah. Yeah, like 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 specific groups might not be as harmful as like say like words like chief or uh, uh, the Braves or uh, you know the Indians or or you know Redskins things like that. Those are those are a lot more offensive because you know obviously they bring certain stereotypes with them and they bring <laughs> about like you know like like the Reds. Now listen, you know, in listen, general, certain stereotypes. It, it, it's all good. I mean, New York has the Knickerbockers, but we don't ever question that name. Bro, I'm looking at this report here. <laughs> I'm looking at this report here. You know how when you go to the you go to a Padres game, right? And the Padre crew comes out and they shoot the t-shirts out. Yeah. Tell me why the Cleveland Indians one time were giving out blankets. Like if that's like the not <laughs> that's that's the worst thing to be giving out. <laughs> hey man, I want to saw a baseball game in Cleveland. Nate Curry is off the chain. <laughs> Okay, okay, now we come full circle, right? Wow. It's just a step above. Anyway. <laughs> See, this is um, bad. See, Brandon, this is this is why shit like this happens because a lot of us don't take it real serious or, uh, you know, to the third nipple or up the ass, whatever you want to say about it. But honestly, once it's a part of it, like, we just let it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay. It's like, true. Like, when something has been around for so long, the meaning of it isn't the same. 
You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not what it has to be. It doesn't have to be negative how you take it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, black people got called the N word and now they black people call each other the N word openly as a sign of endearment, like homie ship. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like, oh, we got to get rid of it. Let's just switch up the term. No, there was a good bit of the kind of wanted to get rid of it. I remember Oprah was trying to get rid of it. People, people yeah. still, people still want to get rid of it today, but a lot more. You know, it's used for a term of endearment. Twitter so would say, Twitter Twitter. would say otherwise. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'd be trying to go on inward rehab myself. You know, like you know, trying, trying to use it. Yeah. You know, exactly. You know, just kind of get rid of it because I feel like, you know, if, if I'm saying it, then maybe like it, it, it kind of gives people the, the, uh, the gall or like the potential to slip up and say it around me themselves. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like if I don't want people to say it, then I shouldn't say it either, you know. But um, also at the same time, it's our word, you know. So it's yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Um, since you brought that up too, real quick, I wanted to go into like that conversation we had about Little Wayne the other day, um, about his masters and all that stuff. Uh, mm. I know uh, I've only I've only listened to one uh, podcast of the Joe Budden podcast. I always talk about them. They had brought the actual topic up themselves too, and uh, they're you know they believe he's getting underpaid as well because they're like his his masters are obviously worth the fortune because like the legacy that he, he brings with it you know. Um, one thing that I also wanted to add to that conversation was we actually don't know like it says his masters but that kind of just says like to me when I when I when I thought that I'm thinking like your like your whole catalog bro like mm-hmm. but we actually don't know if he's giving his whole catalog exactly. to masters or not. We don't know. It could be a portion. It could be maybe his like first three albums or something. Whatever potentially could even possibly be most lucrative to him. Whatever the case may be, but we don't know the ins and outs of that contract. It's situational though. We got to think about if he was offered a hundred million for his quote unquote masters. We don't know exactly what all that we know all that entitles, but um, he's been in some recent um trouble lately. So it kind of makes you think like, hmm. Well, if you have life decisions to make, maybe this is a good move. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess he, too, he's yeah. in trouble for possession of something, something carrying firearms, and they're it's talking a gold, about it's a gold firearm. Yeah, and they're talking about giving him ten years. So it's like, well, if Little Wayne and he pleaded guilty, yeah, and he pleaded guilty. So if Little Wayne's like forty, you know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna be out. You're gonna be fifty. Are you really touring and making music, or can I just take my hundred milli now? Like, what's the difference? And with the way that music's coming out, yeah, his masters might be worth something, but in twenty to thirty years, his music won't be considered timeless. So what I'm saying is, because of you know the, especially in hip hop, the genre that he provided in, kids nowadays don't even give little give Little Wayne his props. You can think about twenty years from now. The only way he's going to be alive, you know, musically is if cats like us still bring up the fact that y'all know who these cats are sampling, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's literally, True. literally people blame Lil Wayne for the decline in hip hop in New York until recently because everybody wanted to be like the South. I can see right now in like six years, something like that, you know, when he's all, he's off in prison somewhere in Takashi, you know, comes out with a song called, you know, Go DJ or something like that. And nobody's gonna know that came from from Little Way. Everybody's just gonna go, "Oh my God, it's this new fresh sound and everything like that." Like I can, I can see something like along those lines happening just because he's gonna be gone for so long. But I definitely agree with you that you know, when he his music isn't isn't gonna go down as you know timeless or anything like that. He's got a couple classic albums in there that I'm sure people are always be like, "Oh, you remember this?" <laughs> yep, of course, Mr. Carter, and then. Uh, Back when mixtapes existed. Yeah, back when he was called Lil Weezy. Back, <laughs> yeah. back then. Lil Weezy ain't yeah. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it, I, I feel like it's, it's probably the best move for him to go ahead and sell that stuff now that I've taken the time to look at the, to look at, you know, what was going on, all of the situations and all that. It definitely makes sense to, to you know, strike while the iron is hot because it's definitely going to be a depreciating value. You, don't, you definitely don't want to be trying to sell anything on the way down. You have to definitely be selling it when either plateauing or on its way up. And right now I feel like it's plateauing because he's dropped a few albums, you know, the last few years and the hype died down super quick off those albums. Like I've heard anybody talk about that Lil Wayne album that dropped out. Not long. It's just, it's pretty simple. It's just the average age of your fan base. You know what I'm saying? And, and let's be honest, like everybody who's kind of raps and popular now, as much as their fans don't want to believe it, Little Wayne was kind of like the 
blueprint for that. He was the 17 year old rapping about this and that and street stuff and then getting into his bag. You know what I'm saying? Like Lil Wayne really did that a long time ago. So all the guys that they like after him, you know, who do you think about who Lil Wayne brought in? There wouldn't be no two chains. There wouldn't be no Drake. There wouldn't be no Nicki Minaj. There wouldn't be all these people who we consider to be the top tier of this genre of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So Lil Wayne is definitely often overlooked for his status and like his, you know, like his legacy in hip hop. But I think when you're talking about numbers and like money, I think Daniel's right. It's it, because of like how society's changing and how listens and streams work and what people consider good content, not, not necessarily great lyricism or like you earn it by your talent. This world is, is, is ran by how well can you market something, whether it's good or bad if it's in your face it's called attention and that leads to a stream and that leads to a number and that leads to money you know what i'm saying so little wayne and guys like little wayne this new wave of you know how people get their money especially in music it's changing it used to strictly be just concerts i mean even last uh j cole was uh in that song in 1985 he was talking about how how you really get your money is off of concerts you know what i'm saying and there is no touring no more so you have to live on your dreams. Yeah. So now all the people who are um, like method musicians where they live their life a few years and then make an album, live their life, and then make it like Kendrick. He don't drop but every three, four years. You know what I'm saying? J. Cole drop every couple years, but he's always working. But these young cats, they know that they're living off a of stream, so they're putting out three albums, you know, every six months. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're better at music. It just means that they have more of it. So it's like, I don't know, guys like Lil Wayne, what do you have to lose by selling your music now? It's not like you plan on making a lot more music between now and the time you're dead. Like you're already 40 and making rap music and the new wave of rap is already taken over and old heads like us only give it so much attention anyway, you know? He called me an old I'm head. sorry, no, you know what I mean? In five more years, you're not gonna be 30, you know, 33, 35 plus listening to cats that are 16, 17, talking about God knows what by that time. Facts. Do you remember yeah, the very first Lil sure. Wayne song you ever heard? <sighs> Unfortunately, yes. Man, uh, that's a long time ago, bro. <laughs> the black is hot. The black is hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to say it was around that time, too. I, I'm, I, I, can, I can remember the video a little bit. He had this purple, like, prowler or something in it. And I can just remember him saying, I know. Something, something, something going on. I know, but I can't ever remember what dang song that was. But, it was. but I remember seeing him way back in the day. It was like right after he was called Little Weezy. And it, and it, he was like his first Little Wayne song or something like that. I cannot remember it for the life of me. I was hoping that that would be enough hint for somebody to get it. But I guess not. Nope, I'm not. I'm not. I've never really been a really big Little Wayne fan, so... Like I kind of listened to his stuff like everybody else, but I wasn't like, oh man, let me download all these little Wayne songs. That 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 like the whatever is going on with his voice, if it's because the lean or because he makes it that way or whatever, I've just never I'm been a be fan. Very of it. honest. It so like, very there was a handful very of songs early I little Wayne. I could live without. I wasn't a fan of the first little Wayne. Same. Um same. Two or three projects in, maybe 21, 22, 23 year old Wayne, 24 year old Wayne, getting into like the year 2000, early 2000s. He really started to really started to pick up when he was slowing down his words and articulating better. You know what I'm saying? When he was, yeah, like soldier when he with was, Destiny's when Child, he was capturing like that, yeah. your mind with lyrics and saying a lot with a little bit of words. That's when he got me. And I was like, damn, he really slick with the wordplay and the metaphors now. It wasn't always like that. But it became that, and he held that for like I want to say a decade, ten years straight was top tier bar work, you know, whether it was album or a mixtape. His futures, I mean, I remember him being on the freestyle in the basement back in the day too. Big Tigger in the basement, he was he, it was between him and Ludacris all the time. Oh my god! Yeah, that's just not fair when you face in Luda though. <laughs> Luda, Luda Chris is one is one of the freestyle gods, bro, especially in the basement. Two time champ in the basement. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know, um, I know he's not my I'm father, not... but I look like Lionel Richie. Oh my god, bro. He's got me with that one. <laughs> oh man. Um I don't really have
have much more besides a couple quick game announcements that are just kind of funny, actually. Uh, one of them is uh, Sephiroth was really or is going to be released for Smash Brothers Ultimate. He's the the next DLC character to come out. It was actually a pretty cool trailer announced during the Game Awards. Uh, also, uh, I'm sad to announce that uh, The Last of Us Part Two won Video Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Uh, we definitely talked about that game quite a bit. Uh, there was a lot of controversy around it. DJ, actually, I spoke to him about it. He believes that the reason why it won is because it had so much uh, publicity because of the controversy mm. surrounding it. And he believes that is what pushed it to uh, win the game, the game of the year. Uh, I said that that doesn't make any sense because people are still playing Ghost of Tsushima right now. And I don't know. I haven't seen any friend or don't, I don't know anybody who's playing The Last of Us 2 today. I can agree with that whole what it's that love it or hate it. It's an obsession type of thing. The more attention you give it, the more numbers it's pulling. So I guess I can agree to that, but I don't know. But I feel like that shouldn't, I feel like that shouldn't encompass what nope. game of the year is. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be like, like the most talked about game. It should be what is every, what came out. Everybody is still playing and is producing numbers, you know, like it should be like all combination of those things. But I mean, hey, Tilo 2 won it. Congratulations, I guess, or whatever. They actually won a plethora of awards, too. I think, like, best voice actress was uh, Abby, the character that kills Joel. Uh, her voice actress won. She goes, I remember her announcement. Uh, I was watching Burl uh, uh Twitch stream, and uh, she goes, you know, I love uh, Joel and Ellie. And then somebody said, bitch, you killed them. Wow. Or you killed you killed Joel, bitch. Like, and I was like, I, how are you going to bring up Joel and Ellie? That's a sore spot for us from your character. We don't like you because of that. Like, chill, lady, chill. But um, and then last but not least, Cyberpunk 2077 dropped. I'm sure any of you nerds out there have probably copped it. Uh, unfortunately, there seems to be major malfunctions with the PS4 release, or Xbox uh, One release, and the PS4 release. PS5 and the Xbox uh, Series X seems to be working just fine, as well as the PC release as well, like the higher quality, you know, higher quality parts. Um, and then apparently there's like a glitch where. Uh, and I don't know why this is in the game. You can like make yourself have a dick or a vagina. What? And for some reason, there's a glitch where it's like your dick, your dick is like falling out of your pants and it's like exposed all the time for some reason. I don't know what that's about, but that's it. Yeah, that's a thing. Like you could customize your character in like a, a bunch of ways. And one of them is to like give your character boobs, give your character a dick or give your character a vagina. You can make a trans character. I actually saw a page where they said if you don't make yourself a trans character because that's an option that you are transphobic, which is ludicrous, obviously, but it's it's so, so crazy. why would you give me it's... an option if you're gonna judge me for choosing one? <laughs> I oh crazy, my god, right? bro, crazy. what the yeah. fuck is going on yeah, with these damn well, games? With this damn world. <laughs> I don't know, it's crazy. But but I, I don't I really don't know why you need to make yourself have a dick or genitalia in general. But apparently, and I, I guess this is where the world is going, there's like a VR sex thing going on in Whoa. the game. So it's like maybe that's what it is. I like what it, what movie was that? Was that was that a uh, Demolition Man with Wesley Snipes where where uh you, you remember that movie? Demo, it wasn't Demolition Man. That wasn't Judge Dredd. That Demolition Man, because it was when uh, Sylvester Stallone comes, like they like thaw him out and he goes to capture uh, Wesley Snipes' character. And then the the cop he's teaming up with or whatever asks him if he wants to have sex, and they start making out. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, oh, "You said you wanted to have sex or whatever, right?" And she was like, "Yeah, but in twenty whatever whatever, uh, you know, after AIDS and all that stuff, friend, uh, you know, kept going whatever. We discovered that having sex like that didn't work anymore. So then, like, she puts like this thing on his head and on her head, and it's like uh, like mental sex." And it's like, you, it's the same feeling, but he like freaks out and he like takes it off and he's like, what the hell is this? You know, and he like runs out of the room. Like, and I'm like, is that, is that where we're going? Where everybody's going to like, just put on some goggles and be like, oh yeah, it, it feels so good. But you're like, you're not touching Send anything. Send me like, the it's, Amazon it's, link to that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Um, and I, I don't have a poll or anything this week, but I just wanted to say, um, Something that I'm, I've been messing with recently uh, was the Kid Cudi album, Man on the Moon 3. It's I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I like it a lot, actually. Uh, my favorite song is The Void. And I've never really been a... I mean, I'm a Kid Cudi fan. You know, like, I like him. I never really, like, go far out of my way to, like, listen to his albums. And I have some of his songs for sure. But I, I really like this project. It's it's been, pretty, it's been pretty good. And I've been giving it a couple listens. And I definitely saved a couple songs. And... Like I said, the void. I'm really messing with that song late, lately. It's it really calls to me. Um, 
I don't know if you guys got anything, any polls or anything you're messing with that you guys want to talk about real quick. Polls? No, I didn't really. Polls Go ahead, Daniel. Like that, I don't know. Just, and just a quick point, though, when you were listening to that Kid Cudi album, because when I was listening to that Kid Cudi album, it made me think of, um, it, made, it made me reanalyze 808s and Heartbreak. And I feel like 808s and Heartbreak was just all Kid oh, wow. Cudi songs he just bought and just reworked and then put them out. Well, you know, he said that he like helped, but I feel like none of it was Kanye except for like a couple of things here and there. I feel like it was mostly. Oh my God, I found the Lil Wayne song. I found it. <laughs> Hold on, so you you're saying that you think that. that's the very first Lil Wayne song? Everything. Yeah, we actually talked about this before. I remember that, Daniel. So you think that Kid Cudi like basically created 808s and Heartbreaks and then Kanye just bought it off of him or like paid him to make it? Kind of like Drake, kind of like Drake with the weekend and take care? No, what if well, kind of like how um you you seen that video of, of Chats when he was like, Oh, I, I made this song for Kanye and it was that wave song. Yeah. Of of the life of Pablo. He's like, I I this I made this entire thing. Kanye just pretty much took it and, and cut out two two or three things and 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 put his own little spin on it and then call it his. Yeah. I feel like that's what happened. That for some reason, especially that song, I forget what the name of the song and my phone just died, but the song I told you guys to listen to, that's the song that made me think of it. And I was just like, this this has a real 808s and heartbreak vibe. And I feel like that's what that's what made me go down the whole rabbit tunnel in my head about him actually not even doing that and just buying all the songs from Kid Cudi and just you know reworking it. I, I mean, mean, it's that, possible. That, that, I mean, in point. Kanye in uh, Life of Pablo, that Father Stretch My Hands part two, there's that part at the end of that song where it goes into designer singing uh, the Panda Panda song. I had heard that on Kanye's project before I even heard it on designer, like before that song dropped. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a leak on Life of Pablo, and I heard it on there before I even heard designer's version. So I, I definitely know that Kanye is a producer but he's not a rapper slash producer where it's like he's just making his beats he's putting he's composing music you know what i'm saying so regardless of where he gets the sound from he's not proud to say that oh everything by me is from of my mind he's gonna take some stuff and put it in his project so i i i wouldn't you know i wouldn't argue with what you're saying i definitely believe there's people in good music who are sampling each other's work and just recreating you know, because I've heard similar sure. sounds often. But I haven't heard this album yet. I haven't heard this album yet, but I'm going to this week. It's, def- it's definitely dope. Um, definitely check it out. Um, it, it, there's like some old Cuddy vibes or new Cuddy vibes, like space stuff, uh, depression stuff, you know, mental stuff. Like it's it it's definitely there. Nothing will ever be Cutter is back. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, and that, I guess that wraps it up, huh? All right, Piglets, this has been another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Oh, my gosh, I remember what I was about to say. So before I go into this intro... <laughs> outro? Real quick, or the outro, yeah, sorry. Before I go into the outro, Kanye West, um, he totally has not been paying his choir, and they're suing him for a million dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Piglets, this has been another installment of Culture Brother and Culture. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Culture Brother and Culture. Oh, Remember, man. Piglets, Culture Brother and Culture is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, <laughs> SoundCloud, and YouTube. We hope everyone out there is staying safe, and if you can be safe, be deadly. Catch you guys next time. He said, huh? He said, y'all money in the collection plate. Ha, 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 ha.